Hey guys, welcome to the Sim Racing Paddock. I'm William Marsh, and one of the most commonly asked questions I get is, what is the least amount of money that I should spend to get involved in sim racing? And commonly when I get that question asked, the sweet spot I tend to say is $200 for a wheel, and then get a console or PC and go from there. But I was thinking, what if I gave the $200 figure and made that into the high mark? What if I said I could make a sim racing setup for under $200? Now we're going to be cutting a lot of corners, as you can see right here, but I think it is possible and you could actually learn a thing or two and get a good sim racing experience for under $200. So let's take a look and see how you can get a beginner sim racing experience for under the price of a Thrustmaster T150. So the first thing we're going to need for our bargain bin sim racing setup is a wheel and pedal set. So next to me we have the Speedlink Drift Oz. Fun fact, I actually bought this three years ago for $40 at Fry's in Southern California. Now, Fry's is on death's door, so this deal may vary, but I've been commonly seeing this wheel and pedal combination for roughly $50 to $70. So I'll say I spent $40, expect to pay about $50 to $70 for this. Now, I basically have let this sit for a couple years in my garage, but I want to test this wheel to see if you can get a decent sim racing experience for under $200. This wheel and pedal set, $40 to $50 to $70. Next up, we need a platform to play on. Now, there are many different avenues that you could take for this. You could get a used PlayStation 3, but the thing is, that's a little too steep for us. So we're going to go to a thrift store and we are going to get an old Dell computer. All right, so here is the Dell Optiplex 980 that I purchased at a thrift store for $40. Now, for $40, this is actually a surprising amount of computer. This is loaded with an Intel i5 CPU. I'm not sure what generation yet. It is said to be loaded with Windows 7, which is going to be good enough for what we need. And then we also have four gigabytes of RAM and 140 gigabytes of storage. So the question is, is that going to be enough to give us a basic sim racing experience? I don't know yet. That's why I wanna test this out. I'm going to hook it up to one of my TVs because as much as I would like to use one of my sim racing cockpits, that does push us well above the $200 price bracket. Also, wheel stands still are going to push us over that $200 price bracket. So let's get our other, other solution and get going. You're meaning to tell me this thing has a display port, but no HDMI? Dell, this computer came out 2010. Aye, aye, aye. So my original plan for this video was to create a sim racing setup for under $200. And actually, I'm pleased to say that I was able to accomplish this goal with half of that cost. So as mentioned earlier in the video, I got the wheel and pedal set for $40, the computer for $40, but where does that leave me now? Well, I had to find a game and I had to find a way to display it and a way to mount the wheel. Now I could have put this on my lap, but ultimately the issue with that is that there is no real support. And also I could have used a wheel stand, something of that sort, but that would have drastically pushed me over my budget. So I made the decision to use an $8 tray table from Target. So what that actually does is it brings me back to some of my roots. Some of my earliest sim racing memories of taking it seriously were actually mounting a Logitech G25 onto a tray table and squeezing myself into the uh, sort of setup I had, and that was how I was able to get my start. Then I moved up, built my own wooden cockpit and stuff like that for about $200, but still, being able to sim race with a wheel and pedal set on a computer, you could do that for $100. 
So let's dive in, let's take a look and see how the driving experience is like. Actually, before we jump in, I do want to explain one disclaimer. So when you are going through the second market, through the bargain bin sim racing experience, and if you buy a computer, especially one under $50, it is a bit of a crapshoot. You could be getting a surprisingly decent computer for a reasonable price, or you might be getting a defective piece of junk. You might get that as well. So when I fired up my new computer, or new to me, I actually was greeted by a warning that my key of Windows, Windows, my key of Windows 7 on this computer was not genuine. However, with this being an OEM Dell computer, they had a Windows key on the top of it, so I entered that in and it worked just fine. Your mileage may vary, you might end up with some junk computer, which I have had happen on one or two occasions. But enough about the disclaimers about computers and stuff. Let's get to the actual driving, what you guys are looking for, and let's jump into R Factor 1. So I gotta say, I am pretty impressed by the graphical fidelity in this, even for a dated title. We are sitting at 106 frames per second on a first generation i5 integrated uh, GPU. I am pretty impressed. I had a $2,000 Dell or desktop in 2008 and this is outperforming that. So without further ado, let's get behind the wheel. Like keep in mind, this is 106 frames per second on a 720p display. At 1080p, it would severely start to bottleneck. So right now out of the pits, we're at 98. Turn one at the Nürburgring is always rather tricky for me. So one thing worth mentioning is I did actually have to dial in a dead zone for this uh, wheel because we actually had an issue where this was starting to pull to the right. I don't know if that is just because it's an old wheel or the nature of these encoders that are pretty dirt cheap. Yeah, that is something to keep in mind. But most modern racing simulation titles give you a way to dial that out. And again, so one thing I want to mention is this wheel also has one of the worst shifters I have ever seen. I am not even bothering with it because you have to reach to the back of the base to basically shift. It is ridiculous, but hey, I guess they had to put it somewhere if they wanted to. They wanted to not take up too large a footprint, so it's interesting. But I am actually surprised at how well I'm driving right now. So we are actually responding well to just the sort of visual input because again, this has no force feedback in it and a dead zone. So I'm running no traction control, no stability control, no like speed sensitive steering or anything like that really. But the only assist I have, I believe is the, uh, and I lock brakes because the brake on this is complete garbage, but I'm actually really impressed by this wheel. And it's a tough thing because $40, you miss out on force feedback, you don't get anything beyond 240, 270 degrees of rotation. But again, it seems like this simulator is okay when it comes to handling this issue. It's not great, there are other titles that would greatly benefit from a 900 or 1080 degree steering, such as rally cars with their 540 degrees of rotation. Or, okay, yeah, this, <laughs> it broke free. You could see that. But, yeah, so, with certain titles, Formula One cars usually having more than 360 degrees of rotation, road cars having 900 to 1080, there is a place in sim racing for that now. Drifting, I don't think I could really drift with this wheel. I could catch a slide with the visual, but in terms of an actual attempted drift, yeah, I had no sort of action I could do with that. So with this, it is really a crapshoot. So you are able to get a decent driving experience out of this on a sim racing setup. You can get decent beginner sim racing. 
would I go out and spend an iRacing membership that costs more than this wheel and buy vehicles like that? No. I'd look around, I'd check out the older titles. GTR2 would be another amazing title that you could get for maybe under $10 and just learn to drive. I'd say, duct tape this wheel down though. This thing won't stick at all. Or maybe if you have a glass table, but then you lose out on a bit of the portability. So yeah, guys, this is my thought on the $100 sim racing setup it's actually astounding that we can get this kind of performance in a sim racing title even as old as this in a setup less than 100 especially when we're seeing a graphics card nowadays going for over a thousand yeah the times they are changing but hey this is a great way to experience some old school sim racing that might not work as well on Windows 10. You don't need to be a master of sim racing to really get a decent experience out of a wheel. You need to just sort of learn the technique, learn racing line, learn threshold braking, learn the basics, and then you can ramp up. Just like I did, I went from a force feedbackless wheel all the way up to a Logitech Momo G25, Thrustmaster T500RS, and now the rest is history. So guys, I keep on hearing people say, oh, what kind of setup could I get for $100? What could I get for dirt cheap? Look around, look at thrift stores, look at sales, look at just coupons even. A coupon could be your ticket to getting a decent computer from a local computer shop. In this day and age, you don't need a fancy membership to race. You just need drive. So yeah, guys, these are my thoughts on the $100 sim racing setup. I would love to hear your thoughts. Have you ever had this kind of dirt cheap budget setup? Or did you have something along the lines of maybe a little fancier, but still relatively modest, less known comments? Also, if you like this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button and that like button so you can help keep the algorithms in check. For the Simmer Simpatic, I'm William Marsh, and thanks for watching.